Hey everyone, it's Big Z and welcome back to Aviary Attorney. Okay, so we need to prove that the king is not a complete idiot. And as you all can recall, I'm sure Nathan told us that he is an avid reader and lover of history. Uh, granted, he may use the books that he checks out as footstools as well, but that doesn't mean he hasn't read the books after he's done using them as footstools. You know, maybe. I would like to present this account given by a local librarian. He asserts that the king is something of an avid reader. Picture books don't count, JJ. Hey, Fluffy Finds His Way Home is a great book, even though it's light on words. Don't count out picture books. Oh, I had no idea that an expansive history on the Macedonian Empire was a picture book. The king has been known to check out as many as a dozen thick books in a single day, covering a whole range of subjects. Face the facts, Severin. The king is an educated man. Hmm. Perhaps a test is in order. No, 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 no. That's that. You don't need to. Yeah, <laughs> that won't be necessary. What was the name of the book you mentioned? An expansive history on the Macedonian Empire. Tell me, Your Majesty, where is Macedonia? It's in Europe, next to the place with the thing with the place next to Italy, I think. Where? Yes, I'll even make it easy. Just tell us the name of the continent. What continent is Macedonia in? You can do this, your majesty. It's a one in seven shot. Can he really do it? I want to say Africa. No. But... I've got it! London! Ah, oh, frick dang it. We're screwed. Oh, Mundu. I think we're done here, your honor. As I have demonstrated in excruciating detail, the king is incompetent, lazy, stupid, and occasionally malicious. So are you. He isn't fit to run a bakery, let alone a nation. Very well, prosecutor. Does the defense have anything to add? Yes? Yes, your honor. I've got nothing. <laughs> I've defended this man to the best of my abilities, and I have nothing more to say. Oh, that made us look even worse. Very good. I shall now converse with the jury. We shall determine precisely which crimes the king is guilty of and decide on an appropriate punishment. A punishment? Lawyer man, you have to do something. I'm scared. Calm down, your majesty. The whole purpose of this trial was to see that your punishment is fair and fitting. You're not going to end up with your head on a spike. At least I don't think you will. Maybe you'll just wear a dunce cap instead of a crown. That mademoiselle is returning. How naive. Negotiations are over, mademoiselle. Once again, I ask you let me pass. Let me extract the king without an issue and we'll be on our way. I have to admit, she's more patient than a lot of people would be at this kind of situation. I warn you, the protesters are getting rowdy. At any moment now, they might charge on their own accord. Your commitment to pacifism is admirable, but you're brimming with naivety, mademoiselle. Be on your way. Tisk tisk. I warned you that your methods were too passive, madame. Oh, is it the friar wolf? Oh no. That foul voice. Show yourself, wolf. Oh, he's gonna kill her. Oh. You. You're the friar who gave me the tip-off about the croque monsieur. Was my information no good, Inspector? Did I not say how and when you could reach the croque monsieur? You omitted a few details. Your words almost killed a few acquaintances of mine. Well, Inspector, it seems that you and I can agree on something. This wolf has a forked tongue. There is no need to direct your hatred at me, madame. I came here to give you a gift. A peace offering. Just promise me it's not going to have her in pieces. You have nothing to offer. I most certainly do. Did you know that the tunnels of the Sleeping City wind straight under the Palais de Justice? It's true. If one were to put enough gunpowder in the right spot, one could even take an entire side of the building down. We're speaking hypothetically, right? Not realistically, not literally. Please. What are you prattling on about? How much gunpowder do you think it would take, madame? 
50 kilograms, 100. Hmm, maybe 200 kilograms, just to be safe. Friar, tell me you didn't. The fuse is lit. In 20 seconds, the pillars of the Palais de Justice will fall like the Temple of Dagon. Running will do you no good, you brother-killing pute! You're bluffing. There'll be no explosion. You would like that to be the case, wouldn't you, Inspector? But unfortunately for you, the Viridian Killer emerges one last time. Dun-dun-dun! You! I must congratulate you, JJ. No, Falcon. You argued excellently. Uh, I'm as unsure of the penguin's fate as you are, but one thing is for certain. You could not have done your job any better. Thank you, Kokoriko. I'm glad you finally decided to peck my ass for once. After a small amount of deliberation, we have come to a decision. Eh? And what would that be? We find the defendant, King Louis-Philippe, to be... Kaboomied? Kaboomied. Mon Dieu, what was that? An explosion. It sounded like it came from right outside. Um, I, uh, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but, uh, well, in the matter of speaking, how do I put this? For pity's sake, spit it out, Monsieur. Rebels. It's the rebels. There was a big explosion at the entrance, and the rebels are pouring into the building as we speak. You heard the rabbit? Everybody clear out. Your Honor, quickly, what was the verdict? Really? In a time like this? There's no better time. Exile, now get out of here. Court is adjourned. Oh. A valiant effort, Falcon, but we're out of both time and options. If the rebels want the king so badly, they can take him. You can't say that! The rooster's got a point, Falcon. Let's just turn the king over and let him receive his dues. We've done all we can. No, we haven't. You can still keep him safe. No. You two give up far too easily. Thank you, Falcon. Spares and Kokoriko, we're escorting the king to r &M Associates. Renan's place? What can he do? If anyone has the power to make the king disappear, it would be that conniving fox. Yeah. Yeah, that might just work. Come along, your majesty. Oh dear, oh dear. Come on, Kokoriko, no time to dawdle. I'm staying. For there to be any chance of your ridiculous plan succeeding, someone must stay behind to delay the rebels. Please don't get yourself almost killed again. Kokoriko. Go. I've got this. I swear to goodness. Good luck. If you get yourself killed after everything we've done to keep you alive, I'm bringing you back to life so I can kill you myself. That damned wolf nearly killed a lot of us. You. You're the one harboring the king? It's a pleasure to see you too, madame. Don't get snarky. Where is he? You're too late. The king has long left the building. Elvis Presley? Oh no, the king of France. For all I know, he could be halfway to Guadalupe by now. So he's already gone. Damn. There goes my opportunity to enact justice. Enact justice. You should have seen the trial, madame. Everything was official, professional, and logical. It was the most brilliant display of justice that I have ever seen. But the king... is in the process of receiving a fitting punishment. Kokoriko, did... Did my father receive a fitting punishment when you were prosecutor at its trial ten years ago? No, madame. But every day since then I've strived towards justice, and I shall continue to do so for the rest of my days. See that you do. Well, it's a good thing that you didn't ask if he had any kids. That's a pretty killer question. But um tss. <laughs> okay. Do hurry up, your majesty. I'm seeing a lot of similarities between him and Sparrowson. I think Sparrowson's a bit smarter, though. This is taking forever. You aren't going any further. 
It's that friar. I'm not gonna let you take another step towards the king. I didn't come here for the king. I came to kill you, J.J. Falcon. What? Very well. Sparrows and take the king and hurry to Renard's. I'll handle this monster. I sure you'll be okay? I can handle one crippled wolf. Okay. Come on, your majesty. He just, like, rips off his cloak and he has, like, a six-pack like those werewolves from Van Helsing. He's like, oh, you think I've just been praying all day? Heck no, I've been working on my ribs. Anyways. Whew. That explosion at the courthouse. That wasn't just the rebels, was it? Heh. <laughs> of course not. That was to take out the murderous pute who killed my brother. Madame Beaumore. She was the madam who pulled the trigger, but it was your words that sentenced him. And I would do it again. You and your brother are heinous individuals. Call us what you like. It doesn't matter anymore. Your blood must pay for this. An eye for an eye. That's the way of the judges of old. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard how the rest of that saying goes. It's not a lot of fun. It really isn't. You don't appear armed. I don't need a gun or sword to kill you, just my six-pack. Anyways, there are a hundred kilograms of gunpowder beneath our very feet. One more step and this entire area will go. <gasps> no! Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my heart, I actually thought they might kill Falcon. Oh, you can't do that to me. <laughs> okay, alright. Vile scum. Inspector, just in time. You look a little... singed. Did you hear that explosion, Monsieur Volps? I did. It seems the room is a true, Mousy. The revolution is in full swing. Go on, get in there. Visitors, Monsieur Volps! Visitors! I wonder who. Oh, my, King Louis Philippe. Good afternoon, Your Majesty. Oh. Oh, are you? Oh, Monsieur Volps. I am, and this is my companion, Mousy. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Your Majesty. I must admit, I rarely have gentlemen of your caliber in this office. Please have a seat. Mousy, fetch His Majesty some tea. Right away! I hear you can make people disappear. Ah, oh, yes, a new identity, a new face. Indeed, I can make that happen. Of course, there is a price. How much? Normally, such a service would cost 100 francs, but for you, your majesty, 10,000. <laughs> 10,000 francs? I don't carry that sort of money on my person. I'm sure you can find a way. That crown on your head and the egg in your hand would surely be enough to pay for this exquisite service. Oof. You are a crook, Monsieur Volps. Now, now, let's not call each other names. We're both grown men. Now, let's see, you'll need a disguise. Ah, here we go. Put this on. <laughs> How do I look? Hmm. Mousy, could you come in here for a moment, please? You see, your majesty. It's... it's that convincing. Of course, but now we need to give you a new name and a new identity to match your new look. We need a name that is original, yet ordinary. Subtle, yet exquisite. John Smith? Brilliant, Mousy. Monsieur, your name is now John Smith. You are an upstanding English gentleman. Oh, this is what happened before he met Pocahontas. It all makes sense now. Oh, why he ran off to America and all that jazz. Je... Je m'appelle John Smith. Hmm, that's no good. We have to work on your English accent. Repeat after me. My name is John Smith. My name is... Jean Smith. Wow, did you grow up in London, Your Majesty? Your accent is impeccable. Oh, jeez. Really? Tell him, Mousy. I didn't understand any of it, so it must have been perfect English! <laughs> the skies, name, accent, I think we're all set. 
Are you ready, Mr. Smith? I don't think so. Of course you're ready. Flee, monster, flee. Take a horse to Calais, and from there hire a boat to take you to the shores of England. Do you think you will make it to England, monster mops? With that disguised mousey, I think our client would be lucky to make it down the street. <laughs> Come on, let's return this egg to suit to Anne. Aw, that's sweet. He got the egg back for her. Okay, I think we're very close to the end of the game. Yeah, I think it's probably going to end in the offices, so I'm going to leave this episode here, and in the next episode we will finish Aviary Attorney, and I will probably blab for 20 minutes about how much I loved it. <laughs> so I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in our next little adventure. Bye!